I'm glad you all are singing the national anthem. It's not one of the easiest ones to sing. But you all are singing it, and you all are singing it from the heart. That's absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. And I'm so glad I did this right at the beginning, not at the end. Because if I did it at the end, you all think I'm trying to get myself a standing ovation. <laughs> nope. But it's good. God bless America indeed. Now, it, I need to check the volume. Is it too loud out there? It is. Yeah, I think the lower, the timpanis are really rumbling. The flowers were dancing. <laughs> yeah, those, yeah, yeah. Because this instrument is very, very powerful. Very. You know, I mean, even with the speakers itself, you know, of course, now with amplification. So I just don't want y'all to walk out here screaming at each other and going like, What are you saying? What are you saying? No, no, no. Okay, so we're going to do this in and out, okay, until we get the right volume, especially for Act 1. Now, the next piece I want to do for you is in my life, you know, it's, it's been more than 34, 5 years now as a Christian. And in my life, if you mingle with me and you start talking to me and you get to know me, the most important person in my life is Jesus is the one right in front of me, is Jesus. Jesus is number one in my life. My mother will tell you that because it was very hard. My parents were not believers at that time. Now they are, but at that time they weren't. And you mothers out there would know how difficult it would be to let your 18 year old leave your side and go 10,000 miles away to the other side of the globe. When it's morning in Malaysia, it's night here. When it's morning here, it's night there. So sometimes it's even hard to try to coordinate times for my mom and I to speak. But my mother will tell you, when he heard from his Lord that he has to leave, I left. Because Jesus is number one in my life. And I came here to the United States of America. I had no one except Jesus. And I came here with only one year's worth of funding. My father sold everything that he inherited from his mother's death, my grandmother, and turned that into funds for only one year. And my father said to me then, son, you know you're going to come back without a degree. I cannot support you. And I said to my dad, the Lord shall provide because he wants me there and I will graduate, and I will have my degree. And guess what? I did. I did. So then when I went home in 2000, when my parents gave their lives to Jesus and became Catholics as well, I asked my father, did you remember what you said to my Jesus when I was about to leave Malaysia to the States? He said, yes. I said, you said, we shall see what your Lord can do. And he said, yes, I remembered. I said, so did you get to see what my Lord can do? <laughs> you know what my father said? My father said, I got more than that. I said, really? What's that? I'm one of you now. <laughs> That's what he said. And I'm truly glad. So Jesus is number one. This hymn, crown him with many crowns. This is always an opening fanfare that I play because I acknowledge Jesus first. He is the guest of honor. He is. Okay, so I acknowledge him. And then you will hear, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. So this is an opening number, all right? This is the fanfare to the risen king. Crown him with many crowns.
that's only the third song. And if I keep doing this at two hours, I'll fall off the chair. <laughs> now, I know Catholics have three important prayers that we usually will say. What are the three prayers that we usually say? Our Father. That's right. The Lord's Prayer, Thou Father, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be, Gloria Patri. Now, at the very beginning, I want to start this. This is a very daring act. To sing the Lord's Prayer right after me playing this fanfare. Breath is a very important thing for singers, right? And I'm literally out of breath right now. <laughs> but I just got the feeling that that's what the Holy Spirit wanted when I put this program together. That this is what He wanted. That solemn, that solemnity of this whole program. Jesus is number one. And with Jesus, <clears throat> The Father is always number one. Therefore, I want to sing the Lord's Prayer to solidify that this night is not your night, it's not my night, but it's Jesus' night. Okay? So here is the Lord's Prayer.
thy will be done, thy kingdom come. That's the most important thing that Jesus wanted. That's the reason why he came to die. Can you hear me? Anyways, there is a hymn that I absolutely love. It's called Amazing Grace. But I do not want to sing it. I want you all to sing it. I'm putting you all to work. Just the first verse. And then I want you to close your eyes. Because of what the hymn says. What does the hymn say? Let's repeat the words to the first verse of Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. That's it. I want. But now I see. Good, good, good. But that first phrase says, How sweet the sound. Not sight. Okay? So that's why I say close your eyes. There's nothing to see up here anyway, it's just me. <laughs> so close your eyes and I want you to open your ears and listen to this sound. This grace, what is it that John Newton heard that he wrote Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound? So I want you to close your eyes after you sing the first verse with me, okay? Just the first verse. You just repeated, you just spoken the words, so you, you know the hymn. And so we're just going to sing it and then close your eyes. I'm going to lead you into this meditative. We're, we're, we're just going to spend some time. What is this grace, this sweet sound? Can we do that? Time and louder, please. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like
now you you know are y'all listening to y'all singing are y'all listening to that isn't that beautiful it's really beautiful when you hear this congregational singing i call it during christmas i love it you know i, I when i do a concert i make them work because i want them to sing i want them to sing and silent night when they sing silent night oh my goodness and i'm enjoying it too because i could hear you all so it's just blessing me so much thank you so much for doing that amazing grace how sweet the sound you know the sound is sweet but grace was bought with a price you know that right grace was bought with a price it was bought with jesus life and the shedding of his blood on the cross more than two thousand years ago the lord jesus came down from his glory from his glorious throne and did it once and for all he did it but he did not just remain dead he resurrected he rose again from the dead, and now we know that he's ascended. So where is he now? He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again. He will come again in glory. He will come again in glory. But I want to take you back. Because remember the night before he was crucified. He instituted what? There you go. But the Holy Eucharist is all about what? Yes, it's love, it's sacrifice. But he gave a commandment. I know it's love one another as I've loved you. But there was another one that is so, so important. And we do this every time when you have the sacrifice of the Holy Mass. Father will lift up the bread, consecrated bread, and the cup, the chalice with the wine. And he will repeat the words that Jesus spoke. The night before he died this is this is the directive remember me remember me and what is it that jesus wants us to remember his sacrifice because as human beings it's very easy to forget it's quite natural for us to forget but two thousand years ago we know a lot of people were crucified by the romans right we know that. But with Jesus, it's different. He was crowned with thorns. He was flogged. Then nailed. But there was a plague on top of him. There was a plague. And what, what does the plague say? Catholics, you should know this. I N R I, right? Yes. It says Jesus, the Nazorian King of the Jews. That's correct. That's correct. So I'm taking you back to Jerusalem more than 2,000 years ago. So that you would remember what Jesus did. God so loved the world that 
and he gave his only begotten son. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day. The soldiers tried to clear the narrow streets. But the crowd pressed in to see the men condemned to die on Calvary. He was bleeding from a beating there were stripes upon his back and he wore a crown of thorns upon his head and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death down the the La Rosa called the way of suffering Like a lamb came the Messiah, Christ the King But he chose to walk that road Out of his love for you The Via Dolorosa, the way to Calvary. Would cleanse the souls of all men, made its way to the heart of Jerusalem. Oh, down the Via della Rosa, called the way of suffering, like a lamb in the Messiah, Christ the King. But he chose to walk that road out of his love for you and me. On the Via Dolorosa, all the way. Volume is it better out there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not too loud. Good. 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 Good.
fantastic. Down the Via della Rosa, Jesus went. He embraced that cross. He embraced it. And it's just amazing, you know, that love. What wondrous love is this? What wondrous love is this? That my Lord God should take upon flesh and die for me. Ask yourself that question. The love of Jesus, nothing compares to that love. You know, this next hymn, How Great Thou Art, is my mother's favorite hymn. My mother and my father became believers in 2001. <coughs> They were baptized, the Easter Vigil, in Our Lady of Lourdes Church in Malaysia. My parents are very devout Buddhists and Taoists. So was I. But my mother was met with Jesus. And Jesus came to her and she fell in love with the Savior. And the rest is history. My mother is very petite. I'm 6'1", 6'6", maybe I've shrunk a little bit. But anyways, my mom is very short. But I call her, she's a spitfire because she will go tell all my uncles and aunts, my cousins and all, you need Jesus and your kids need Jesus. And she will take you to the tabernacle because she did that with her youngest brother. And you talk about Eucharistic miracles. The doctor says that my uncle's heart is hardening. The muscle is hardening. There's really nothing they could do. And my mother took him to the tabernacle, prayed for him, asked Jesus to heal him. And you know what? He was healed. So my grandmother, my mom's mom, knows it very well that Jesus has healed my uncle. So there are a lot of testimonies like that with me, okay? So I can't just sit here and tell you all of it because it'll take at least two to three days. <laughs> so maybe one day I'll write a book and then y'all can read it, okay? But How Great Thou Art is her favorite hymn. Now, I know when you hear How Great Thou Art, you think it's going to be big and grand and everything. No, I'm going to do it very, very different. I'm going to draw you into what we, we Catholics call sacred silence. I'm going to draw you. The second part, the second act will also have this, which is more solemn. But this one, I want to, because you know, if you study the, the worship of the Israelites, when God actually led them and gave them that liturgy of worship, and you all know about the Holy of Holies, you all know about the Ark of the Covenant, right? You all know that. You know, we call Mary the Ark of the Covenant. Why? Because, you know, Mary bore Jesus, the Word of God within her, her womb. So, you know, but the Ark of the Covenant in the old sense of worship in the Old Testament, as you get closer and closer and closer into the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant is, where, G, where God actually meets with the people, only with the high priest. You know this, right? And Jesus is our high priest now, one and living. Um, but the high priest goes in alone, but as he goes in, he does not shout the name of God. He whispers the name of God. He whispers the name of God. He gets quieter and quieter and quieter. God told Moses, seven layers of cloth, this layer, how many layers? You know, the front, the curtains, then the, another set of curtains. What was that all about? Is to keep the sound. As you get closer and closer to the heart of God worshiping Him, it gets silent. It gets silent. It gets silent. How great thou art.
closer and closer to the heart of God. Get silent. Sacred silence, you want to call it an all. You just could not speak. That was my experience when Jesus first came before me. I will share that in the second act. But now I'm going to end the first act. But this is something fun, okay? Because like I said, Jesus is my number one. He's my number one in my life, all right? Now, this piece is an Italian. Well, it's not really an Italian. It's a, it's a Neapolitan, so it's from Napoli. Um, it's a love song because in the year 2003, I'm going to share this because this is something that God has done. In the year 2003, one of my works, because I'm a, I'm a composer, so I write for orchestras. One of my works was performed by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra of London. And they performed this work as an overture. It's an opening to the concert for the three tenors. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, I have not said if it's the three tenors. <laughs> it, 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 it was. It was the three tenors. <laughs> Pavarotti, Domingo, and Carreras. And it's their first time they performed in UK together as the three tenors. And it was the last time because Pavarotti died, I think a year and a half after that, of uh, pancreatic and liver cancer. Um, but, you thought that it's absolutely great, you know. Yeah, I thought it was absolutely great, but greater than that was how it happened. And I need to tell you this story. Because I was praying and uh, the, the Malaysian Philharmonic Orchestra, you know, the, how many of you know the Patronas Twin Towers in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur? Okay, they just put together a international symphony orchestra in Malaysia. They call it Philharmonic. Philharmonic is usually bigger. So the difference between Philharmonic and Symphony Orchestra, you hear Berlin Symphony Orchestra, or you hear London Philharmonic Orchestra. Philharmonic is a bigger orchestra. There's more members. Okay, now you know the difference. Anyways, so they have commissioned me to write a work, Malaysian Philharmonic. I did. So I, I wrote the work. And then I was praying, you know, and then I thought, okay, well, you know, to myself, because I didn't want to go to back to Malaysia. I mean, just just to go out there and take a bow, I mean. <laughs> so I was praying and you know what the Holy Spirit impressed on me? You need to go home. And I had the audacity to tell the Lord, no Lord, I don't need to. Because I said, I've done this so many times. All I do is just go up there, take a bow. And then it's done. So I want to take a 24 hours, you know, to 27 hours flight just to go home and do that. This is in Malaysia. You know? And the Lord said, no, you need to go. Do you think that you wrote the work? It's not your work. You're just a vessel. I wrote it. And I want you there so that you can take the bow for me. <laughs> yes, Lord. I bought a ticket. I flew home. But you think that that was it, right? No, no, no. So there I was. I went up there, I took my bow. Okay, yay, you know, clap, clap, done. <laughs> but I, I at least fulfilled the Lord's, you know, what he told me to do. So at least I'm not in trouble. Three days after the performance, someone called. Called my parents home. See, I wasn't in Malaysia anymore. And they want to talk to me. And my mom came to me, oh, you know what, son? There's a call for you. I said, who's calling me? You know, and so she said, oh, it's someone with a um, strange accent. <laughs> strange accent? I said, who's calling me with a strange accent? So I picked it up. And this lady goes like, Aaron, my name is Margie. You do not know me, but I'm calling on behalf of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. I was there during the performance of your work. Would, would you be interested for the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra to play one of your works? Ooh, I said, yeah, sure. Do you have any works so that I can take to the committee? I said, 
Yeah, I can borrow it from my music teacher because she has my the archive of my works. Uh, let me see if I can do that. So I call her. So long story short, call her back, met her in Kuala Lumpur, which is the capital city. Gave her the scores. She took the scores. After about I think another three four days, she called me again, and this is what she said: "Good news, Aaron." I said. Okay, it says, well, we want to perform one of your works for the opening concert by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra in Bath, England. <laughs> okay. It says, do you want tickets to come see it? Hmm, I'm kind of like, well, um, when is this? In August. So that's about like two, three months, okay? I said, yeah, sure. I said, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I reside in the US, not here. Yeah, I know that. You know, I said, okay. Um, so, get back to me and, and, and maybe maybe I'll let you in a few days and I'll let you know. And then she, this is like nonchalant, right? Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, it's the concert with the three tenors. <laughs> and I'm going like, what? I said, the three tenors? <laughs> yes, you know, Pavarotti and Domingo and Carrera. So I said, yeah, it's their first time that they are going to be performing. They're going to be performing outside, outdoor and it's going to be in front of the Royal Crescent Hotel in Bath, England. Oh, yes. Can I get three complimentary tickets, please? <laughs> there were 7,000 people in the secured area. I was seated at the third row. I call it the spitting section because when the three tenors spit, I could get it. <laughs> But outside, because there's a park, there's Royal Victoria Park. They had big tellies, they call it, big screen. And there were 30 to 40,000 people picnicking there, watching those big tellies. Why did God want me to go home? He knows what he was going to do. He knows what he's doing already. He knows there's that divine meeting already. Until today, I do not know how in the world did Marge got my number. And it's not even my number. It's actually my teacher's number. I bet you she probably got it from the conductor. You know, I'm trying to put things together because I don't know how she got my number. So that is why God wants me home. All right. And when Pavarotti sings O Sole Mio, it's amazing. It's just amazing. It just rings. I am no Pavarotti, but I'm going to sing O Sole Mio because the words, and you have the words. Now, it's actually, I'm only going to sing the first verse. And if you read the translation, the refrain says, My own son, O Sole Mio, my son, son, sola, okay? S U N. But me, is Jesus. Jesus is my own son. He, his face gives me the light. He is, his radiance gives me the light. So when I sing this, I sing it for Jesus, okay? But y'all get to enjoy it. So let's take a trip to Italy.
Please enjoy, please enjoy the refreshments and remember the lobby has $20 CDs by Dr. Lee.